Welcome to another episode of Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony, and with this channel, I try to bring you guys a variety of different tech-related content. So, if this is your first time with us, please consider subscribing to the channel and make sure you hit that little bell so that you're alerted to when I release new content. In today's video, we're gonna take a walk through Unify Protect's mobile iOS app. Okay guys, so in my last video, we took a look at Unify Protect's user interface on the computer. Today, we're gonna to do the same, but we're gonna take a look at it on the iOS mobile app. Now, one of the first things you are presented with when you launch the mobile app is the sign-in screen. And what you'll note here is the only option you have, at least on the iOS version of the app, is signing into Ubiquiti's cloud service to get to your controller. Now, while this made remote access super, super simple, especially in my situation where the cloud key is in a lab situation, so we're in a double NAT situation, I would really prefer to see uh, the ability to have direct access to your controller on a local network and not be forced into using Ubiquiti's cloud service. But in any event, that's the option that we are presented with now at the time of this recording. Once you get past the sign-in screen, then you're presented with a screen that lets you set several app preferences. I'm not sure if the direct access versus cloud access is an issue on the Android version of the mobile app, so if you Android users out there know, just please put that in the comments down below. That being said, let's take a look around the Unify Protect mobile app on iOS. Okay, I am signed into my Unify Protect controller on my iOS device, actually an iPhone. Looking at the camera screen, I only have the one camera, the G3. I hope to add more cameras to the system soon. In the upper right hand corner of the screen, if you click on the circle with the three horizontal dots, you're presented with two options. The option to add cameras or hide the info. Now the info that they're referring to, if you click on hide info, is the name of the camera in the lower left hand corner of the screen and the motion detection notification in the lower right hand corner of the screen. It does not remove the timestamp, the date and timestamp in the upper left hand corner of the screen. Let's take a look, I'll show you. So let's click on hide info. And you can see the info in the lower left and lower right portions of the thumbnail did disappear, but the timestamp and the information in the upper left hand corner of the thumbnail is still visible. So let's just turn the information back on by clicking show info. On the left hand, upper left hand corner of the controller screen, you have your menu line. So let's click on the menu options. And you can see the list of options that were presented with here. You have your camera view, your user's view, activity view, and settings view. So we're in the camera view here. If we go to users, you can see that we're in the user's view and we only have one user and that is me and I'm the owner and I'm the administrator. Now we can click over to the roles tab and you have the option here under roles to create a custom role. So if we go down and click on custom role, it gives you the ability to grant access to particular cameras either with view or edit per permission. So that's pretty cool that Ubiquiti makes that available. Going back to the main menu, let's look at activity. And under activity, you have all of your activities listed here. Now the types of activities include any recordings, motion events, and alerts either for the controller or for the cameras. So right now, all the events are showing, but if we click on the controllers tab, you'll see it will categorize just by the alerts for the controllers, which we have none. Alerts for the cameras, again, which we have none. And then under motion, there are all of your events. Going back to the main menu, if we click on settings, let's click on alerts. Now I happen to have activity alerts enabled, but you don't have to if you don't want to. Under the alerts, when they're enabled, you have different types of alerts. You have system alerts, camera alerts, and user alerts. You can pick the type of alerts you like to receive, whether a device or the system goes offline or receives an update. And if you click on the icon here, you can determine the type of alert you'd like to receive, email or push notifications to the device. So that's pretty cool. Account and cloud shows the status of the cloud access. 
while the Updates tab shows you the software version and gives you the option to enable auto updates. Let's go back to the camera menu. If we click on an actual camera in the list of cameras, you're presented with another view where you can look at the events in your timeline and you could very easily scrub through the events just by sliding up and down the timeline. What you'll notice when you're scrubbing is a slight loss of quality in the pictures, but once you select an event to view, the quality comes back to full quality. That being said, in the lower left-hand corner of the screen, if you click on the block of dots, you have three options. You could take a snapshot, export the clip, or delete a clip. In the upper right-hand corner of the screen, if you click on the settings icon, you're presented with the information for the camera, the name of the camera, the connection information here. Then you have your video options, your stream resolution, when to record, infrared, adjust camera picture and overlay. I'm not going to go into those in detail, just I'm going to click through so you can see. One of the things you can do here is select your resolution. Now, typically it defaults to auto 720, but I have mine set to 1080p. And you can select when to use 1080p only for this particular app session when connected to Wi-Fi or always. When to record, you could select motion, never or always. Again, I don't want to go through all of these. You have all of your camera adjustments, just like in the desktop version of the controller, all your overlay information. Down at the very bottom, you have control of your motion zones and your privacy zones, and as well as rebooting the camera and unmanaging the camera from the controller. At any point in time, if you flip your phone horizontally, it'll bring you into full screen. And then if you tap on the actual image itself, it'll bring up your timeline and you can scroll through your timeline here as you did in vertical position as well. You're presented with other controls on the bottom. And then if you flip back to vertical, you go back to your normal view. So there you have it guys. If you liked this video, found it helpful, and would like to see more videos like this, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. You can help out the channel by remembering to subscribe, give the video a like if you haven't already, and share the video. And remember to use those Amazon affiliate links down in the video description below. I know they don't change your price, but they do help out the channel. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. As always, I thank you for watching. See you next time.